Hi everyone, today I would like to share with you the way I have recently been editing my astro picture. I have a Vaonis Tracer 2 and I'm a complete beginner at editing pictures. So I started watching tutorials online and couldn't really find the process I was happy with. Uh, it was a bit too long and complicated. So I came up with my own process combining different techniques and tools that shouldn't take no shouldn't take more than 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and I'd like to share this with you. So this will require three tools. Uh, the first one is a serial uh, that is completely free. I will share the link with you in the description. Uh, the second one is a tool that you have to pay for, uh, Affinity Photos, um, and again, I will share the link in the description. The third one is more of a plugin, uh, but it's also a standalone tool if you want to use it that way. It's called Topaz, Topaz Labs, um, mostly used for denoising pictures. But let's get started right away with Serial. So you open your file, in this case that will be a .tiff from the Veil Nebula Mosaic Observation I was using a few days ago. I already worked on it, so we will start from scratch to show the full process. Here we are, and the .tiff is here. So it will be dark, it's normal, we're in linear mode and the picture hasn't been stretched. So let's go to auto stretch and we see already quite a nice image. I hear there's a lot of noise. Um, usually the first step is to crop the image, but I don't see any or very little stacking artifacts or noise on the sides. Uh, if you want to be safe, you can just crop a little bit the image, like this, crop. In my case, I actually didn't do it at all the first time I worked on it, and it turned out fine. Uh, but if you want to be safe, you can do that. And then the second step would be to remove the background. So we go to image processing, processing and background extraction. Uh, usually the default parameters are quite fine. You can just check what's happened on generate. Okay, this isn't fine because you see those red dots, they shouldn't be at any nebulosity. And they are quite heavy. So either you remove them one by one, remove them from where they are, or you move the grid tolerance, you decrease it so it's not working so well in that case. So I think we'll have to go manual. So let's put it back. Let's add the number of samples if you want. This will just create more samples per line, but that also means you will have to remove more. Um, I should do a grid of 20, and we'll have to remove the bad dots manually. This is on the nebula, this is not this at all. There's plenty of nebulas in here, you don't want this to be seen as background or minority. So right click, remove them by the way. Um, there's a lot of way to close the nebula, this is... Okay, left click to add more, here we can add some more because there's nothing there. This is also quite nebula as I want. Here seems okay. Yeah, it's too close to the edge. This is also a bit too many. Okay, here it's a bit more borderline, but if you're not sure, it's better to do more. Uh, and this is almost okay, but don't want those artifacts that are in the nebula very much. This is everywhere. I wish it would just stay like this a lot more than one at a time, but that's how it is. Um, this is not good. Okay, it should be more or less fine now. You can add a few more manually. But that should be enough. And once you're happy, you just compute background. Okay, the difference is not that obvious. Uh, simply because it's not done yet. It's sometimes red. Okay. So now you can see the original image, if you click here, and the new one. So. You can see we got rid of 
not he knows. Um, but it's fine, it's perfect, and we'll work on that later. <coughs> then, once we've done that, an important part is the color calibration, so photometric color calibration. And you need the name of your nebula, in this case, it's NGC. 5960, if I'm correct, but you can put either. Uh, NGC 5960 is in the name of your folder if you use Burmese, for example. Uh, but it should be pretty easy to retrieve, you can Google the name of your nebula. NGC 5960 will be useful. So just input this here, enter. So this is the catalog, and it will add the parameter of my nebula. What you need to add are these, the focal length, 250 in my case, or the spread 2, and the pixel size, 290. If you don't know about use, simply, for Veronis, it's the, on the product description on the website, for any brands, please check the cost specific smart telescopes. And once this is all OK, this is good, OK, and this is slightly different from others, once this is done, there we are. You close and we are done with Siri. So what we do now is simply save the file. So TIFF file that we're gonna save as Veil Nebula. Uh, let's do tutor. Save it in the folder. Uh, this is where good save. Save the same way. We can move on to Affinity Group. We open the file we just saved. So from Brownies Expert 2, the Veil Nebula photo is here. So it's black again since the uh, stretch wasn't actually done. So we are going to do it right now. You can also stretch with Siri uh, this way. So you have. You go back to linear mode here, so it matches black to the end, and histogram transformation. And here you have apply auto stretch, so you can do it like this, and then apply, and then you can play around. It's already quite good, but I think uh, it also is a. I mean, I'm more happy with Affinity Photo and the curves uh, levels, uh, but of course, you can use Serial. Uh, then I advise to watch a few tutorials about this once you are in the group by Affinity Photo. So let's go back to Affinity Photo. Here is our <coughs> stretch. I was just using a tone mapping persona. And you have to play with the tone compression uh, slider here. I usually bring it to between 20 and 35 percent. Um, I think we can go to 35 right now. Apply. And then it will be mostly about playing with levels here and curves here. So levels to add a little bit of darkness in here. And then curves. So curves, what I usually do is go on the left side in the middle, drag it down a bit, not so much. The same on the right side, so in the middle, drag it up. Merge and repeat. A few times like this. Don't want to do it too much one way or the other, either up or down. You can adjust the levels in between if you think it's time to add some darkness a bit. Then you can use curves. It really starts getting something interesting. You can try different positions as well, um, since we don't want to bring out too much noise. Let's do that too. No, 
Alright, then I can go do it. Let's grab our control. Don't be noisy. You don't want to go too much first because you will lose a lot of mobility, you go especially in Instagram. So never more than this. Uh, but I like to get a bit of room to play with the curve if I to have six space in here. Even if it's not much. And you say it's about twelve now, twelve two, so up here it's almost become the star of the scene. We don't want to do that. Um, because I really try to find the right balance to the other one. But let's go like this and we can reduce to this part. So once you're there, filter like topaz. And this will denoise the picture. Uh, so it's loading in this rectangle here. Here we are. <coughs> so let's unzoom and see something we can work with here. So on the left side will be the original picture, on the right side the denoised picture. You can also sharpen or you can change the lightness of this tool, but I'm mostly using for noising. So now it's analyzing the picture, trying to detect objects and faces. Uh, for this, I'm not far enough to for astrophotography. So we will denoise. <coughs> denoise all. I usually go in this normal mode when I use too much, and I even start around 30, though I still don't touch too much between 0 and 5, maybe 10 if I need, so we may we need to denoise the, the screen. Okay, so now we have tried with 30 persons. I think we need to go a bit more with 40. Okay, it's finally done. I think we are okay now, 40 persons. Um, again, it depends on uh, each picture, on each nebula, galaxy, whatever your target is. So just play around. Uh, in this case, we will export to Affinity Photo. <coughs> and it's finally back to Affinity Photo. So, um, We can play again a bit with levels, but we are almost done here. I think that's good merge. And the last thing you want to do, so here it's a matter of taste, is to reduce the stars. They're quite bright and maybe hide somehow the nebula. So what you can do is go to select, tonal range, highlight, so it will select most of the, the, the bigger stars. And and you can zoom, see that it doesn't always take the full star, so you might want to grow maybe a selection, grow three, circular, and add to, let's say, 1.2. Um, so you see it added some other stars, maybe 1.1 will be enough. Okay. I think we're good with one. To apply and from there we will do filters, blur, and minimum blur. And mirror view to compare. And on the left you will see the change. So circular is ticked, all good. Let's try to do one. You see it gets darker here. 
you don't want you want to search to look at the smaller stars so they don't completely disappear unless that's what you want 1.2 I think it's not that maybe 1.4 I think that's more than 1.4 I click apply and to deselect control And we can see how now the nebula is the star picture. So that's about it now. If you're not happy with the illustrated level, you can um, go ahead and see. This is good. And here you can just save your image. So you can save the project with save as. And that will save uh, just app auto uh, file. And you can also export your file as a JPEG, for example, and simply export, save. And you are done. I hope you, you enjoyed this uh, short tutorial. And uh, let me know if you have any feedback or tips. Thanks for watching.